everyone. I'm Linda Nickel, and welcome to the Texas Women Photographers Circle. This is our monthly meetup. And here with me this evening are moderators Leslie Sessoms, who's based in the Dallas Fort Worth area, Sue Pitts is in Sun City, and Charlie Hickman is in San Antonio. And I'm here based in Austin. Every month, I invite a guest to share their photography and some tips of um, tips and techniques to help us improve our photography and to inspire us to try something new. The schedule for upcoming presentations is on my website at lindanickel.com, as well as the links to previous sessions on YouTube. Tonight's guest is Amy Davies. Amy is a nature photographer, based in Fort Worth, Texas. Amy has found that her nature photography style lends itself to being popular among non-photographers and people decorating their homes. And she has successfully marketed her work through art shows and local festivals. In tonight's presentation, getting your photography into people's homes. Amy will discuss her process of how she shoots, edits and displays her photos to make them stand out and appeal to a crowd, making them more accessible version of nature photography. If you're on Instagram, look for her at Quiet Sun Photography, but you can connect with her through her website, quietsunphotography.com. I found Amy's work in my Instagram feed a couple of years ago, and I was enchanted by the way she captures light, making um, her ability to break down landscapes to smaller vignettes. So Amy, it is nice to have you here. Um, I didn't really give you a choice, but <laughs> <laughs> you're not special that way. Um, there's a few people in this room that are like, no, Amy, you're in a, you're in a club. <laughs> um, <laughs> either in a nickel club that, hey, Amy, you know something I don't know you have information other people might want to know. So thank you for coming and, and sharing your, your knowledge and your experiences with this group. So with that, um, I kind of skimmed over. I kind of feel like I know you a little bit because we, we've had a, a little bit of an, you know, personal um, relationship. So it, and, the, and that's when I do the, my worst introductions, because I'm like, well, don't y'all know this? So did I miss anything that, you know, you really need to get in front of anybody? No, no. I don't think so. I think that's, that's well, with that, great. I'm going to turn the um, program over to you so that you can share your mm -hmm. screen if you're ready. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, thank you. Even though I did not have a choice in doing this, thank you so much for inviting me uh, to do it. Um, I'm really excited about this topic. Um, it's something I'm actually really passionate about. I love doing art shows and art festivals. Um, and when she said I could present on anything I wanted, I was like, that has to be it because it's really the only thing I feel like I know <laughs> how to do. So um, with that, here you can see on my intro screen here, you can, uh, I asked my Instagram community to submit photos of my work um, in their house. Um, and then they were great. And I got a lot of responses. And so you can kind of see here um, all the different examples, um, which is a lot of fun as an artist, too, just to get to see, um, you know, how people uh, use your work and where they put it and that kind of stuff. So that's been a lot of fun. Okay. It's kind of slow. Sorry about that. Um, so here's our agenda. I'll kind of introduce myself a little bit more um, while talking about shooting just a little bit, how to curate print and then and then how to display ultimately, and then some final thoughts that I wanted to leave you with, and then questions. So uh, Linda talked about this too, but if you wanted to go ahead and scan that and look me up right now, you can just scan that QR code on your phone. There's my contact information. Uh, definitely please, uh, there's a lot to talk about in this sort of realm. So if I don't cover something that you want to know, please, please, please reach out. Um, I love helping people. I love talking to people about it. Um, so yeah. Um, let's see. I guess I would say I've been shooting photography for about eight years. Um, I did my first art show in 2019 um, here in Fort Worth. 
I originally started with birds. I love, uh, I have a lot of birds in my photography. I love, uh, I started out birding and then took photos of that stuff. And then it kind of went from there. Um, I'm a certified master naturalist. So I do uh, have an affinity for nature and the conservation of it. Um, by day, I'm a data analyst, desk jockey. Uh, so getting out in nature is really just um, a relief for me and, and um, helps me keep my balance. So one thing I wanted to start with, especially since this is a women's group, um, art is subjective, okay? Everybody, when you go to these art shows and things like that, uh, you see all art of all kinds and everybody's into something different. So if somebody passes by your booth, like don't, don't take it offensively. What's gonna be really cool is that you're gonna find your people and the people who like your art and they're going to be drawn to you. And it is such a high. Um, it's really cool to, to, to meet the people that really get what you're trying to put out there and, and see what you see the way that you see it and talk to talk to other people about it. Um, for me, my photography is very uh, feeling based. And so when people come into my Instagram or my booth, they say how relaxing it is or that it's very peaceful and, and that's first of all intentional but secondly it is how I relax and so there's a lot of emotion and feeling that go into that goes into my photos and so um, putting that out into the world can make you feel a little bit vulnerable and that's totally normal um, yeah I just tried to remember like why I'm doing this and uh Sometimes I just go back and look at my Instagram like, man, these photos are awesome. Like you can totally do this. So find those things that drive you and then the reasons that you want to do this um, and it will uh, push you to go further. I keep hitting the space bar. It's so okay. So first of all, I wanted to talk about shooting for yourself. So again, uh, I am a data analyst, so during the day, so my job is that my day job is actually kind of stressful. Um, and so again, photography is my way of, of releasing and relaxing. And so uh, don't ever forget that. So when you get caught up in like selling your stuff and marketing your things, like it, you can get kind of caught up on the business end of it a little bit. And so you kind of neglect to shoot or you put too much pressure on what you're shooting. Um, but don't, you know, and it's hard not to do that. It's, because it's fun, you know, but, um, you know, always go back to, you know, why you, why you started doing this to begin with, and, uh, and it will continue to be a stress relief for you, and um, it will keep it fun. Um, you don't want it to not be fun. Um, listen to your body and emotion and time and stress, so I've definitely had to uh, not do art shows for a while, because I get burned out, or you know, that I might not even shoot for a little bit. So just listening to yourself and, and knowing what you're capable of and your limits and things like that, and then you should be fine. Um, so now that I've been doing a few shows um, and I've kind of learned which of my prints are kind of popular. So when I'm out shooting for myself, keeping it fun, if I do know something that, you know, I tend to sell well in or, um, you know, think that could be an opportunity, then I, then I'll take that opportunity while I'm out in the field and, and shoot that. Um, but that's going to be harder to do until you're a little bit farther in the process. Uh, but definitely keeping keeping true to yourself is definitely the, the first step. And then the curation. So you're shooting for yourself, but now that you're actually going to start showing, um, you need to start curating for your actual audience. Um, showcasing there's a lot of different ways to get your art out there that's what we're here to talk about there's digital means social media uh, there's your online website and um, maybe even a store that I'm actually um, kind of in the process of working on <laughs> we'll see how it works out um, art shows and festivals that's where my um, personal experience comes in um, getting into galleries or coffee shops, storefronts, that kind of thing. So there's a lot of different ways that you can actually showcase your art. Um, and so again, like my 
my personal experience with social media and art shows. So a lot of my advice is probably going to be uh, skewed a little bit that way. Um, but again, if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Or if there's somebody that's doing something that uh, you want to do, um, reach out to them and, and ask them. Um, they'll probably like talking about it, <laughs> just like I do. So. Um, so when I'm actually curating for a show, um, for an art show or something like that, um, there's a lot of questions that I ask myself. And I, and I know that this is probably a lot of the heavy lifting, is, especially as photographers, we have no idea what, what to pick and what to choose. Um, so these are some guidelines that I actually use for myself. And so first and foremost is what I put this on my wall. Um, me asking to put some, like, putting something out there and asking somebody else to put that on their wall, uh, I wouldn't feel great about um, if I didn't think that it was capable of going on my wall. Um, and so it, it has to fit a certain decor and, and feeling and vibe. Um, and so, yeah, and I, I think that, again, staying true to yourself, that's going to come through, you know, and so staying, you know, with things that you like, that you love and that you would put and that you would decorate with, like, print those things and, and see, you know, what works. Um, does it invoke a feeling? Again, a lot of my stuff is very, um, you know, peaceful or tranquil feeling. Um, that's what I feel when I'm out shooting. And so I think a lot of that translates. And so a lot of people will pick up on that and they want that in their space. They want to feel, you know, peaceful. But, you know, there's a lot of directions that you could go with that too. You know, a lot of people love a lot of different themes. And so, whatever it is that you love and that you like to put out, like those are gonna be your people. Um, so I have seasonless here. This is definitely a personal opinion, <laughs> um, but something that I find, uh, you know, a lot of people I don't think like winter on their walls like year round, you know what I mean? Like, uh, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that if you do, it's just something that, uh, you know, if I'm in the middle of the summer in Texas and I'm looking at, you know, I actually have a, a, an, an Antarctic iceberg, you know, I'm just like, that feels weird. And it doesn't feel appropriate year round in my house. And so I'm not sure that I would necessarily uh, put something on my wall that uh, has like a, a very intense seasonal feel to it. Um, just reaching into your artistic style. Um, what is it, uh, you know, you could find your most like artistic piece and then just try to look at that and assess that and decide, you know, what is it about this that I love? What, uh, what is my style? Um, and then just kind of sticking with that for a bit. If it's not working for you, you can always change that up too. So, um, Instagram is a great way to understand what people like too. Um, you know, just putting your stuff out there and, Something might get 40 likes and then something might get five likes and then, <laughs> you know, something might get 200 likes. And so you can kind of see what people like. Um, again, you're not trying to shoot for other people like this is for yourself, but it is good. Uh, it's another tool that you can use uh, to engage um, find out what people like. So um, and I did talk to Amber a little bit about this, too. Um, when you're curating um, there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. So I personally print a lot of different photos. Um, I kind of started out that way because I didn't really know what, what people wanted and what they like. Um, I still do it just because I like to put as much stuff out there as I can. Um, people react to different things. Um, so something else to consider would be like an, a limited versus an open series. And this is something that wouldn't hurt for you to decide before you start printing, because if you do decide to do a limited series, um, that is basically saying, I'm only ever going to print 50 of these photos. Okay, so that means that each one of those photos, one through 50, is, is uh, they're printed, and then there's not ever going to be anything after that. When you do that, you can charge a little bit more for them, because they're never going to be out in the world, and you have to kind of, you know, stick to that a little bit. <laughs> Open series is definitely where this is what I do. I don't have a limit on how many I print. Um, at least now, it's definitely something I'm considering now that I've been doing this for a little bit. And so 
um, you know, you don't have to limit yourself in the beginning. You know, you can always change it up later. That's what I'm maybe going to do. And so you're, you're unlimited on an open series. Uh, pairs, triplets, diptychs, and triptychs. So one thing that I have found at art shows is that a lot of people don't just want, if they're decorating their home, they have a, a space to fill. Um, and that could be, you know, one big piece could fill that. A lot of people, uh, a lot of people like to do pairs and triplets. So they'll ask me which photos go well together. And so then we'll be filing through things. And so having an idea of when you're printing, like, hey, these three photos go really well together. And then I can print all three of those and maybe even display them um, together. Um, diptychs and triptychs are a little bit different. They're a little more artsy. It's just the same, same photo, you know, cut twice or cut three times. And so having those ahead of time is, is really helpful, especially even if it's just in your mind. Um, because people will ask. <laughs> and then another thing is, what are your ultimate goals? So what, how, how serious of an artist do you want to be? Do you want to be very exclusive and very luxury? Do you want to be very accessible? Do you want to just um, price things really uh, in an accessible way? That's, that's how I do mine. I have um, different size prints at different prices so my my cheapest thing is $25 my most expensive thing is $100 and so and there's a range between there and so you can do um you know a you know college kid that loves you know hummingbirds they can they can buy a $25 print a lot easier than they can build or uh, buy like a big giant uh print that's matted and so um again that's a personal uh personal choice Again, just look at what your goals are, and then you know also also this can change along the way. So no pressure to have your entire life. Social media. So if you do follow me, you can. I have one main account, and so that is my Quiet Sun Photography account. I keep the look of this sort of similar to what I might print. Um, I don't print everything that's on my Instagram, obviously. Um, but when you can go onto somebody's page and then, um, you know, immediately see what they're, you know, what the vibe is or, you know, what kind of photography they do, um, it really helps kind of set the stage uh, for what they're going to buy. So if they're going to go to an art festival, they'll know kind of what to expect while they're there. Um and also it's kind of it's your body of of work it's your body of art and so it can kind of go together um it helps you you know gauge interest we talk about that um it can help you research what people like especially if they make comments and leave feedback and it's just a it's a great way to do it um if you have a specific page for what you plan on selling or for your brand um it's been really helpful to me. Um, people can recognize my work um, pretty easily. Uh, with that said, I do have two other pages <laughs> that probably nobody on here even knows about. Um, so I do have a personal page. And so if somebody wants to tag me, um, you know, at the gym, <laughs> you know, I don't want that going on my photography page. Um, I do, I've done painting classes. I've done planting and that kind of thing. So I still have that social media outlet where people can, you know, tag me or I do something fun and I can post that. And so you don't have to interrupt your your flow of art um, and your whole look on your main art page. Um, I do have a quiet sun street. So this is also my like my I don't really keep up with it, obviously. <laughs> I only have 66 followers, but it's my my travel photography. Um, I really again, I have a full time job. And so managing one social media account is enough most of the time, but, um, and it is a priority to me. So if these other things are priority to you, then um, it's, a, it's a good way to separate your art. Um, so I wanted my, I do travel quite a bit. And so I did want an outlet for those types of photos um, when I'm not just doing nature photography, um, which is why I actually have this, this second, second page. Um, I've seen, artists do their they'll have like a color page and then they have a black and white page and so I've seen that quite a bit actually um and then obviously the street and travel versus nature and then your personal one as well 
So printing, um, this is a big one, right? Because this is probably where we'll do a lot of the, the heavy lifting between this and displaying. Um, so I have a few recommendations. Um, having been to a few art shows and just kind of observing other people um, and myself too, and just kind of keeping an eye on myself, is just make sure that whatever you print is high quality and in focus. Um, sometimes it's hard when you love a photo, but if it's not in focus on screen, it's going to look worse when you print it. <laughs> so just making sure that, you know, it, it's good quality. You know, you want to, you want to present yourself in a good light. Um, and so you want it to look good. You want it to look professional. Um, so just make sure that it's a really good, high quality, high quality shot. Um, something I didn't do in my early days that I do now is I keep an inventory. <laughs> um, again, I print a lot of different stuff. And so keeping track of what I have in what size and uh, how many um, can be helpful. If somebody's looking for something specific, I can quickly tell them if I'm actually sold out of it in a certain size. Um, it's come in handy quite a bit. Um, it's also great for knowing what people buy and what sizes and which prints specifically. Um, it's a great tool. Uh, moving forward, you can just kind of learn from it. Um, hey, nobody bought this print in any of the sizes. Either this wasn't the show for it, or maybe this just isn't doing that well. Um, signing your work. I also did not do that in probably my first show. And then I had a friend whose father was a photographer. And I was giving her a print. And she was like, well, why aren't you signing it? <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? And so um, I've learned to sign and actually just put a year. I just put my name in the year I printed it, first printed it um, on the mat. Um, it's just a nice touch. People really like that. They uh, they like to see that it's from a local artist and, you know, that really adds a, a personal touch. And um, yeah, it's just a really cool thing that I've learned that people really like. Um, using standard frame sizes. Um, unless you plan on custom framing uh, everything ahead of time and then selling things in the frame, um, it's hard. I would think it's hard to convince people to buy your stuff if they have to go out and buy a custom frame immediately. Um, again, this is a personal choice of mine. Um, I do like using standard framing sizes because I can say, hey, um, if you just bought this $25 print, you can go to Target or Amazon and buy, a, buy this size of uh, frame. And so they love that. I just tell them, you know, I give them my business card and I'll write down, you know, what size frame that they should buy for it. Um, just, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, but just making it easy for them, making it easier for yourself. It's easier to find maps. It just depends on, again, your goals and what you're trying to do. Um, and so it's, 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 for me, my, my ultimate goal is always to make things accessible and easy for people. And so that's one way that I do that. And so I have here, um, if you guys want to screenshot. I like to have stuff to screenshot <laughs> for people, but um, this is kind of what my standards and this is kind of like an industry standard and we'll talk about this a little bit too. Um, let me talk about this way. Okay, so there's a couple of avenues that you can go down. You can print your own prints. That's what I do. Um, I print and mat my own stuff. I used to cut my own mat. I don't do that anymore. Um, yeah, I've saved a lot of time buying the mat, but um, but I do still print my own stuff. I tried a printer one time and things were not coming out the, the way that I expected and the way that I wanted. And so at that point in time, I decided that I wanted to be in full control over my print. Um, again, because of time, mostly, um, this was actually a big time saver for me. Like, having to go run and get prints or something like that was just like not in the bag, but having my printer sitting next to me and I can just test something really quick to see if it's working, doesn't work, try it again. And then I can print it again. I realized that there's a lot of investment. Like you have to really dedicate yourself if you're going to buy your own printer. Um, but it, I knew I was going all in. And so um, having full control really helped me be able to, to do that. If you do decide that you, if you don't have the space, um, or just not interested in having your own printer, you can work with a print shop. I don't have a ton of advice as, as far as that goes. I would just say if there's somebody that you know, um, 
ask them where they get their stuff printed, um, find references, and then start early and start now so that you can get sort of a relationship and kind of get to know how that works before you really have to meet a deadline for a show or something like that. You like, you want to know how it's going to come out before before you're even preparing for a show, I would think. Um, but that's my only advice if you worked for a print shop. So because I do my own printing, I wanted to go ahead and share where I get my stuff. Um, all of my paper comes from Red River. It's a, Del it's a Dallas company. Actually, they offer these awesome sample kits. Um, and so they kind of label each piece of paper um, that tells you which one you're printing on. So you can take the same photo and print it on all of all of the different pages and decide what you like. Um, I did find um, like a really nice warm mat um, that really worked with my photography. Um, and so I would have never found that if I hadn't used one of these test kits from Red River. And they're really fast and I highly recommend them. I talked about that I buy my mats now. So Ready Mat has a, they have these show kits, which are absolutely phenomenal and they save a lot of time. So back to the industry standard on frame sizes, you go there and you tell them, or you basically pick out, you know, the size of your photo um, and then, you know, you know the outside dimensions of that too. And so the show kits have the mat and the backboard that will go behind your photo and then actually the little plastic sleeve that it will go in and it's such a time saver and you don't have any waste. Um, that's all accounted for with on their end. And so you just get this nice little package and they always ship it very carefully. My corners are never, never damaged. Uh, so really highly recommend them for, for matting. Um, tutorials. Um, so Logan Graphics has a great website. Uh, so this actually Logan Graph is who made the the uh, the mat cutter that I bought. Um, I again I started out doing that. I don't do it anymore, but they do have a lot of resources on. Um, I love when companies have <laughs> like videos and tutorials for their products. Like it makes it so much easier. And so one of the best um, websites or one of the best tutorials I found um, is how to mat how to do a teeth and mount. Um, for your matting and it's a great way to do it because you're not going all the way around um, the photo has room to breathe and um, shrink and expand with um, you know different weather conditions and that kind of thing and so it's a great way that's worked for me so far to mount my photos to to the mat um, if you do go with Red River they have a lot of uh, printing tutorials too and, and how to print on their paper and how to uh, manage different printers and that kind of thing. So I do recommend that. So displaying, this is huge. Um, this is again, more based on my art show experience or art festival really, um, just a few art shows. But um, yeah, so again, if, if, if I don't cover something, definitely reach out. But this is probably a lot of where the meat will lie. <laughs> in this presentation. Uh, so preparation. If you have a goal in mind of what you want to do, so do you want to do festivals? Do you want to do art shows? Start going to the things that you want to do. Um, I have been going to art festivals since I moved up to DFW in 2003. So I just love, do, I love going to them. Um, and it's something that I've just been doing for a long time. And so when I decided I wanted to do it myself, I felt very prepared on how people display and things that I liked and things that I didn't like, um, even just how you talk to people and how you appear to people, like just do the research, go to the thing. Um, if you want to do art shows, start going to gallery openings, um, that kind of thing. Just start researching. Um, art Going to the art festival can, can give you a lot. Um, trying to get to my notes here. Uh, can give you a lot of research. It can tell you um, inventory, like how much are how much stuff are people bringing, um, that kind of thing. Um, how casual are the displays? Um, what are the prices like there? Um, and ultimately, is that the festival for you? Um, so just finding and going to different festivals, you can kind of learn uh, where your art may or may not be a hit. Um, and so just going to them and you can just learn so much before you even display. Highly, highly recommend it. 
uh, it's, it's taught me a, a ton just going to them, even just for enjoyment over the years. Um, get or take your own uh, headshot. Um, so I was going to go get my headshot actually from Amber and then I uh, chickened out <laughs> and uh, decided to do it myself. So I took about like 300 different photos and this one on the right is the one that I ended up with only liking and it doesn't even show my face. So that says a lot, but <laughs> um, getting one ahead of time can be helpful um, when you start to do art shows and art festivals, they will ask for one. Um, I put the art goggle um, sort of, they, they, they usually create a program. And so having your artist statement, deciding on like the top five photos that really, that really convey what you're trying to put out into the world and really represent um, your art can be really helpful. Um, and just having those things prepared before you start applying to things can can save you a lot of time because a lot of the, those things have deadlines. So when you learn about something and then by the time you can apply, um, you're gonna have to try to fit all this stuff in. So this is a good way to prepare. Um, and again, the stuff will be, a lot of the stuff will be published or you use it to apply or something like that. So um, highly recommend maybe starting to do this now even. Okay, so display. I am very proud of my booth. <laughs> I love it so much. Um, a couple of the things that are a few of the guidelines that I sort of go through when I started building out my booth and decide how it's going to look. Um, because my goal is for people to take this home and, and put it in their home and display it, um, that's kind of always been my focus is uh, how would I or my target audience decorate their own home that would make this photo look really good um, or this this photo would look really nice and complement their space? Um, and so I do kind of try to reach outside the box here. Um, when you go to a lot of art shows, everybody has like the the grids or the mesh and, and that's great. And it's great because it's really lightweight and it's easy to use. Um, I wanted to dig a little bit deeper and do something a little bit more, um, a little bit more serious, <laughs> I guess, a little bit more uh, like um, artsy or something more, um, again, just reflective of, of what you might display in your home. And so um, I look at, you know, I'll go to furniture stores or um, different places like that to kind of, you know, add a personal touch. Obviously, I have the displays um, that I got off of Amazon, by the way. <laughs> um, but yeah, just, um, you know, like my golden, little, uh, my little golden displays for my little prints. Um, those came from like World Market or something, you know, just just going around and, you know, as you're out doing stuff, especially for Christmas, just be like, hey, this would be a really cool thing to display, um, you know, photos from. Uh, so that's kind of that's kind of what I do. Um, I do try to, even from the, even from my very uh, first art show, I almost took a fake it till you make it approach because I wanted, uh, I wanted people to take me seriously. And, and I think in order to have people take you seriously, you have to have a very serious and professional looking booth. Um, I've had people tell me that it looks like I've been doing this for years, um, even in my first one. And so, and that's just not true. Um, I just took it uh, and just, just ran with it. Um, obviously, I haven't had everything from the beginning. Um, you kind of grow and you learn what you need. And then you actually have different sort of setups for different types of shows. You might have like a big setup for a big show or a little quick setup for a small show or, you know, just different tiers of of things that you want to do. But the bottom line here is to just, just treat it seriously, treat it like art. Um, and, and other, other people will see it that way too. And they'll take you seriously. One thing, um, I mentioned earlier was making it easy for people. Um, I have multiple payment methods. Um, you can see in this, uh, couple of these photos, I have QR codes, um, for Venmo and PayPal. Um, I actually have a square so I can scan cards, I can tap cards, I can um, do chips, that kind of thing. Um, I don't do cash anymore. I did it my first one <laughs> and then uh, COVID, you know, everybody kind of stopped doing doing cash anyway. And so I tell people I will only do cash if it's for the exact amount, like I don't carry change. So if they want to hand me, you know, some money, that's fine. Um, 
but then tell them to, you know, if they're about to buy a print or as they're buying it, you know, tell them that it's the standard frame size. They can go anywhere and buy a frame uh, for this. Um, again, it's accessible. Some people will go out and get custom frames. That's great. Awesome. But I also want to make it easy for people too. And they don't have to have this big, huge commitment, you know, in order to buy something. So final thoughts. Um, and I did just say this, like treat your art and yourself seriously and other people will too. Um, it's a big reflection on, on, uh, on yourself. And, and if you are serious about it, I'm very serious about myself. And, and so I think people can see that. And, uh, and I think that they'll treat you with respect too. Um, it's okay to grow organically. I did start out very intensely with my booth, but I didn't have everything. I didn't have a big sign um, in the beginning. Um, you know, you just kind of learn what you need, you know, through time and, um, you learn going into like the next, like the next part, you, you learn what events are for you and what's for, what's not for you. I, uh, I did a, a, fest, a four day festival. I took PTO for this festival and I did terrible, <laughs> like did absolutely terrible. Um, and that's going to happen and that's okay. And so you've just got to learn that like, Hey, it's not me. It's just, this is not my crowd um, or it's just a different type of like day or time or, you know, demographic. That's just, just not for you. Um, <laughs> so don't think that that's a reflection on you because um, people will come for sure. Um, keep the momentum going. Um, once I started doing one show, it was easier to do the next because you have everything ready to go. Um, sign up for the next thing, figure out what you need for it read directions. I know when I do art goggle, it's like 20 pages of directions and read what those people want from you because <laughs> it will make your life so much easier um, in, in that regard. But yeah, just keep the momentum going. Keep doing stuff. Keep putting yourself out there. Learn as you go. Um, look for different types of things. Um, you know, I uh, Linda gave me the opportunity to be in an, in an art show. Um, and it really, I don't even know if I've ever told you this one, but it kind of created a monster because after that, I was just like, took off and I started applying for all the things and doing all the things. And so um, it's amazing the kind of lift and momentum that you can get from even just doing one, you know, one event. And, and again, people, people are great. For the most part, I've had nothing but supportive people out there when I'm out there showing my stuff. Um, if there's anything that people complain about, it might be the prices, but you know, again, I try to make my stuff as accessible as possible. And if they can't afford it, you know, that's not on you necessarily. And so, um, you know, I understand these days too, but yeah. So with that, I will leave it open for questions. Good. Cause we have questions. Let okay. me go ahead and get you to take your screen down. And you may have answered some of these like after she'd asked and then I was like, well, I want her to repeat it. So if it's something you feel like I already answered it, that's okay. But answer it again for me. Karina wants to know what sizes do you find that you sell the most? Oh, that's a good question. Um, the smallest. So my, uh, so I have to do a five by seven that's matted to um, an eight by 10. I would say that. And actually my biggest size, which is 11, uh, sorry, 13 by 19, that's matted to 18 by 24. Um, it's either people are super committed to putting it in their space, which is the big one, or um, they put the little one in there that they're like, oh, I can find a space for this. So definitely like the biggest and the smallest actually. Um, but I mean, I do sell across all the different sizes. Um, yeah. Okay. Um. I feel like you may have answered this, but um, Sue's curious, are your sales mostly framed or most of them are print only? Um, so I do sell, so everything um, that's in my booth, it's all printed and matted. So that's, that's the main product is that I do mat everything. Um, the thing about being a paper, paper nerd, I actually matched the perfect matte to the color paper that I use. Um, and so that was really an important thing for me. Um, so I do, that is my product. And then also if you're trying to get it into people's homes, they, 
your frame choice may not match their home. You, if you looked at the front page, like if you look at the first page, you'll see a lot of people did end up doing, because I do gold, um, gold frames. Um, I do that because my stuff's really like light and, you know, kind of pastel. And so I thought a black frame would be too, too heavy and distracting. A lot of people will go home and they'll buy a gold frame. And so I do have frames up um, to sell. I do mark up my, my frames quite a bit. Um, first of all, once they take it, that's my display. <laughs> um, second of all, it took time to do that. And then, you know, shipping costs and that kind of thing. And then the other thing is my husband actually custom makes some of my acrylic frames. So I ramp up the price on that too. So I will sell both, but the prints with the mats are the main product. Okay. Um, I don't know that you answered a bit. What kind of printer do you have? I, so right, I actually don't think they make it anymore. So I might have to update soon, but it's the Canon uh, Pro 10. Okay. I love it. It's great. And the, the largest size you can do it on it is a 13 by 19. Okay. So that's helpful. So Mary's question is, do you sign any of the prints like front or back of the mat? Um, if it's in a frame, how do you sign that? Or yeah, so I actually, um, because I sell my prints in the mat already, I actually sign uh, on the bottom right corner. So on the mat, not on the photo, on the mat, in the front, kind of on the lower right, just above the, the like just above or just I don't know where the meat, the mat meets the, the photo. I don't know how to describe that. Um, but yeah, on the front, um, I think people really like that touch. And so they like to see that. Um, I have included like little like artist statements before. I'm like, you could do that. That's another option too. So you can put that on the back. Um, there's a lot of different ways to, to do it, but that's how, that's how I do it. Okay. And um, Nancy's question is, how do you determine if you're going to limit um do a limited or open series? And if it's limited, do you post those to your Instagram? Oh, that's a really good question. I am just now looking into that uh, myself. So um, I don't know if I should be an expert on it. I have some photos in reserve that I'm that I'm considering doing limited series. Um, it's hard because they're, they're some of my favorite photos. And so not being able to put those into the world is really weird. Um, I would probably do more. I, I don't know how much advice on that I can give. There's a lot of research that you can do on that and I'm gonna have to do it myself, um, but it, it'll be hard. <laughs> it's kind of hard because you want everybody to have your stuff. And so, um, yeah. So I'll offer my two cents worth only because I recent, oh, not recently, it was last year, worked with a gallery and we were doing a limited edition of prints. We were doing a fundraiser and we had, I believe we had 20 artists come together. We all donated a print and it was limited. We all agreed to, you know, let it go. Um, what, and working with a gallery owner who has a little bit more experience and sells absolutely ginormous, um, prints, um, her professional opinion was, you know, we had to get word out that we were doing this. And so we did post them to Instagram, but we did such a low resolution mm -hmm. where it was itty bitty. And, and we certainly um, did the same thing if we put it on a website. So um, that's one way you've got to let people know you have them. So right. also want to be able to protect what you've got. So you know, she felt comfortable and um, the photographers that were involved in this were people that were so far advanced and, and experienced and sell hundreds and hundreds of, of prints and books. And, you know, so I was just kind of uh, taking in whatever they said to do, I did. So that was what they did. Um, second question is, how do you figure out your pricing? Um. So you definitely want to figure out how much something costs, right? Um, so, you know, you figure out your printer costs and your paper costs and your mat costs um, and that kind of thing. And then just your, 
you know, artist, your time of putting it all together. And um, it, that's a difficult question too. Um, again, because it depends on what you, what you're trying to do. So again, my stuff is priced pretty low, I think, um, on the low end. Again, I, I do that on purpose because I want it to be accessible. Um, if you are trying to be more exclusive and more luxurious, like, you're going to have to price it up a little bit and do your limited series kind of thing. Um, scoping out what other people are doing, um, whether it's discreetly or not. Um, oh, and that is something I did want to talk about that I did kind of miss. Um, if you are going to art shows and doing your research um, and you're looking at other people's booths, please honor the artist's art first and say, hey, your art is gorgeous start there and then if you want to ask about their booth or something like that then then go on to do that but I've had people come into my booth never say a word to me make comments to each other about my booth almost like they're planning and then and then walk out and so that that's hurtful you know a little bit because it's like hey I, I put a lot of time so um so if you are going to go to an event just kind of look and see how people you don't have to even tell them that's what you're doing but definitely just be like hey your art is awesome. And then you can just kind of like browse and, you know, be sincere about it um, and that kind of thing. So um, it's a, it's a tough question. I just, I decided to do my stuff pretty low, but I definitely, um, it's still a pretty good margin on it. Okay. Um, Barbara's curious, do you sell from your website? And if so, what percentage of your sales come from your website? Yeah, so I, I don't sell from my website yet. Um, I'm working on it. I do love the personal element of selling in person. Um, I feel like the people who are going to buy off your website probably already met you um, at a show or something. Because I that's what I, the questions I get a lot at the shows and that sort of thing is, hey, do you can I buy this later? And I'm like, eh, sorry, right now, right now. Um, but yeah, I it is something I would like to do in the future. So I can't. Um, do that directly, but I will say that the personal element and being able to tell stories and the context behind a photo is is important to you're almost you're you're doing sales essentially. So um, yeah, okay, thank you. Um, let's see here, a uh, couple more questions. Um, how do you find out about shows, art festivals, et cetera, in advance so that you have enough time to apply? And what is the application process like for art festivals? Yeah, so um, I think this really goes to what I was saying. Like, if you start researching now, start going to the shows, uh, follow the art. Um, I would say follow the art groups, associations, all of that, photography associations, all in your your area, wherever you are. Um, Fort Worth has a pretty uh, pretty good art scene, and so there's like a few people that you know put things on throughout the year, and so. If you start following them, you'll start learning what they're, what kind of festivals they're going to do and that kind of thing. So just Instagram is great. <laughs> Facebook yeah. is great for that kind of thing. Once you start following, you can see the suggestions that other people make. Look what other artists are doing. Um, again, just start looking in your local, uh, local stuff, and then you should start learning about things ahead of time. Yeah. Um especially here in Texas, um, we have so many small communities that have, this is our, our annual festival. So once you get on that festival circuit, you're going to hear about, you're going to run into people, you're going to run into the same people, you know, kind mm -hmm. of making their, their way around exactly. the festival circuit. So um, for Texas, it's real easy. If you just Google Texas, local Texas festivals, it's going to get you three or four of them for sure, if not 10 or 14. Right. Yeah. A lot of them. It's a lot. It's very overwhelming, right. but, but it is, you know, pick and choose. And um, I I personally do not do festivals, um, but my understanding is the first time out, pick a small one. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. Because it can get very overwhelming and very intimidating um, that first time out. So pick a small one until you go, eh. and, and it kind of helps you not put an out, a large outlay of money on. Right stuff until you really get you know knee deep into the you know you really want to do this um okay so charlie's question is are most of the festivals in the fall and spring we have a lot of market days but not sure if they are year-round or not 
Right. So I'm in Fort Worth. Um, it's real. I mean, I think most people here are from Texas, but um, I mean, you can't do anything in this. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, most most things that I have participated in are either in the spring, the fall, or around Christmas. So a lot of people will do um, sip and shops, and they'll do you know like local things, like local pop ups and things like that too. Are probably the three biggest. Yeah. Times. Yeah, it seems like for me personally, I'm more inclined to be out and about for fall festival. So I'm thinking, well, sh I think it's fall, but you know, that's because I'm now ready to play because spring I'm right. playing and I'm not noticing and, and and not giving up a lot of my um, wildflower hunting and gardening and all those other things. But um, I, I do think they are um, predominantly spring, fall and holiday um, festivals, but correct me if I'm wrong, but some of those holiday festivals to get into these bigger venues, you have to apply so far in advance um, to get yourself in there because they're very, they'll handpick who they want. So, right. Um, right. Yeah. So this, this do your, do your yeah, homework. Just, yeah. Do your homework. Go out this, this holiday. It's about, I mean, it just kicked off yesterday. Right. So like, look for all this different shops, look for the holiday stuff, take notes, which ones do you want to do? Ask them how to apply you know, just, just get out there and start going to the thing. <laughs> Amy, breathe. You're I done, know. my friend. You're done. <laughs> um, all right. With that, Amy, I'm going to like close out the session and say thank you for coming and thank you for sharing what you've learned as you've, you know, put yourself out there with your work. And it was um, delightful. And I was, I'm very tickled to hear that, um, that you, uh, <laughs> the experience that you had with our exhibition has prompted you to like dig in, dig in and really make something, you know, of your own out of this whole process. So I wish you nothing but the best. Um, so with that, ladies, um, you can reach Amy through her website, Quiet Sun Photography, but you can give her a follow on Instagram at Quiet Sun Photography. Our next meeting is on Thursday, December 7th, and Trisha Ziegler will be here to share her presentation, The Wonder of Wandering. And until next time, I hope that you get a chance to get your cameras out and play, and I hope that we'll see you in December.